We have got a huge new comic book day coming up this week. So many brand new series are releasing and big name titles are coming out that you do not want to miss out on this. So stay tuned. Welcome back everyone, AR Comics here, and today I'm going to be going over all the upcoming issues this week for new comic book day, first appearances, new arcs, you name it. But before I get started on that, if you are new to the channel and you want to join a community dedicated to comic books and raising awareness for mental health, and then go ahead and hit the subscribe button down low and the little bell to get notified. Every time I drop new content, you won't regret it. And now, without further ado, let's get started on this week's books. So as I was saying before, it's going to be a huge week for new comics. There's a lot of brand new series releasing. Get your wallets ready. I'm going to be going over AWA Upshot and Aftershock comics together because they're both having lighter weeks, but they're both coming out with brand new series. The first one today is from AWA Upshot. We have Erratic, number one. It has a cover A and a cover B, and I really like the way it sounds. I really like cover B, but I'm just going to read a little bit about it for you so you can make your own opinion. It says you're 15 years old. You're suddenly granted incredible powers. Cool, right? There's only one problem. You can use only your powers for 10 minutes at a time. What do you do when you have to save the world, but you only have 10 minutes to do it? This is the problem faced by Oliver Leaf, a teenager who just moved to a new town and a new school, and is having a hard time navigating class and his crush before the interdimensional monster started showing up. I think it sounds like a cool new series. I really like AWA Upshot. I give them a chance pretty much every time there's a new series releasing, so I'm definitely going to try to pick that up. That's the only issue from AWA. Next up, we have a brand new series from Aftershock Comics called Knock 'em Dead. I really like this cover. I think this is really cool. And this is another one I'm definitely going to try to pick up. It says, sometimes you kill, sometimes you get killed. But no matter what, everyone dies the first time they go on stage. Prior Bryce has always wanted to be funny, and now he's taken the plunge and started doing stand-up comedy. Unfortunately, his older sister Ronan wants her brother to stop daydreaming and focus on his future. Pryor is determined to succeed. The only problem is, he totally sucks at stand-up. That is, until an accident changes everything. Leading both Pryor and Ronan to discover comedy isn't all that it's cracked up to be. I'm definitely going to try to pick that up. I love the cover. I think based on the cover alone, I'm going to try to grab it because I don't really know what it's about just based on the description. I like the way that they describe the whole thing. So I'm going to give it a shot. After that, from Aftershock Comics, we have Red Atlantis. Number two, it only has a cover A. I wasn't able to get issue number one. I wasn't really interested in it either, so I'm going to be skipping out on this one. But those are the only three issues coming out from both of those publishers. I'm definitely going to try to grab Knock 'em Dead number one, and I'm going to try to grab Erratic number one, cover B as well. Next up, we're going to be talking about Image Comics. So usually Image Comics is my go-to. I love indie books. I love pretty much everything that Image comes out with. But in my opinion, I think they're having a very light week this week. First up today, we have Dead Body Road. Bad Blood, number six of six, it only has a cover A, and the series is finally wrapping up, so if you're reading this, make sure you grab it so you can see how it ends. Personally, I'm happy it's ending, because I really want to read this, I wasn't able to grab some of the earlier issues, and hopefully they come out with a trade paperback, I'm looking forward to it. But after that, we have Firepower, number six, it only has a cover A, and this is the end of the arc, so do not miss out on this issue, I think it's going to be a big one, Weelun is making an appearance, and I don't think they've actually said his name yet, it's the person that's going to be on the main cover A for this, so also, it could be a big first appearance, but like I said, I don't remember if they've actually stated his name before. But after Firepower, we have Inkblot number four. It only has a cover A. I do not like this series. I read the first issue. I didn't really like the artwork and I really didn't like the story. So I dropped it. If you are reading this though, let me know down below what you think about it because maybe I'll pick up some of the past issues. After that, we have That Texas Blood, number six. It only has a cover A, and this is the end of the arc. This is another series I read the first three issues for. I thought it was extremely slow, and I just really wasn't too into it, so I ended up dropping it. But I've talked to a few people, and they said it got a little bit better, but at the same time, I've also talked to a few others that said it's extremely slow, very boring, and they said the same thing. They think they're going to drop it. So there's another issue that I would love to talk about down below in the comments section, because it's something I really wanted to get into. I just couldn't. After that, we have Unearth number eight, only has a cover A, and I'm not sure if this is a big thing, but from reading the description, it says that the main character uncovers the cult's dark purpose. It didn't say if it was the end of the arc or a big, you know, first appearance or something, but if you are reading this, it could be a big issue for you. 
after Unearth number 8, we have Walking Dead Deluxe number 4 coming out. It's got four different covers. This is a series I'm going to be skipping out on. I love The Walking Dead. I have some of the issues, not all of them. Some of the bigger ones, but I have the compendiums. I'm not spending more money on The Walking Dead. But that's it from Image. Like I said, it's definitely going to be a lighter week, and the only one that I'm going to be picking up is Firepower number 6. Only as a cover A, so I'm getting cover A. But next up, we're going to be talking about Boom Studios. Now, I just got done saying Image Comics is having a light week. Boom Studios is having even a lighter week. But you can't really fault them because they just killed it on local comic shop day. Hope you were able to pick up some of their cool stuff. First up from them, we have Buffy the Vampire Slayer, number 20. It has to cover A, B, and C. I'm not reading this series. I do really like that cover C, though. If you are reading this, this could be a bigger issue in the description. It said it has a shocking conclusion. It didn't say if it was the end of the arc or not, but based on that, it might be the end of the arc, so you don't want to miss out on this one. And then the only other issue they're coming out with this week is Lumberjanes, end of summer, number one, cover A, and cover B, and cover C. Don't miss out on this if you're a Lumberjanes fan. This is the end of the series. This is a big oversized issue. You do not want to miss out on this. I've heard great things about Lumberjanes. I'm not caught up in it. I haven't been reading it. But if you are reading it, you do not want to miss out on this ending. Those are the only two things coming out from Boom Studios this week. I'm not going to be picking up either of them. So next up, let's talk about DC Comics. So I'm actually really looking forward to DC this week. They're coming out with a couple brand new series, and they're coming out with some titles that I'm really looking forward to. First up today, we have Batman 104. It has a cover A and a cover B, and I love this arc. I'm a big fan of this series right now. Thank you everyone that finally got me to start picking this up. I've been missing out this entire time, but I'm happy I'm finally on the train. I love Ghostmaker. Clown Hunter's really cool too. I like the dynamic they all have going back and forth with each other. I'm really looking forward to this issue. If you've been on the fence with this, pick it up. It's definitely worth it. After that, we have Strange Adventures number 7. It has a cover A and a cover B. I only read, I think, the first two issues of this, and I really wasn't too big on it. I didn't really enjoy the story too much. I thought it was going to get better, and I'm sure it did get better, but I thought it was pretty slow in the beginning, so I ended up dropping it. After that, we have Deceased Dead Planet number 6. It has a cover A, B, and C. I really like the first Deceased. I read the first series. I think Deceased Unkillables was a little tie-in that they had with it. I loved both of those. I don't know why I didn't end up picking this one up too, knowing that I really liked the first ones. I figured this was kind of going to be the same exact thing, and I'm sure it probably is, but I like the whole aspect of this series. I'm just going to wait till a hardcover comes out, because I'm sure they will, and maybe they'll even have one that has all the series combined, so I'll be looking forward to that. After that, we have a brand new series called Batman Catwoman number one. I'm going to read a little bit about it for you. It has a ton of different covers, so make sure you check with your shop to see which exclusives they're going to be having. And if you've been following my videos, you know I don't really cover those or the incentive variants, so make sure you check with your shop. But it says, echoing plot points from the King's epic Batman run, this sweeping tale is told across three timelines. The past, when the Bat and the Cat first fell in love, the present, where their union is threatened by one of Batman's lost loves, and the future, where the couple have a happy life and legacy, including their daughter, Helena, the Batwoman, and as the story begins, after a long marriage, Bruce Wayne passes away, which frees Selina Kyle to settle an old score. I'm really looking forward to this. They mentioned the Joker at the very end because how can you have a Batman story that doesn't involve the Joker? They do it every time, but it is a black label written by Tom King. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm definitely going to be picking it up. Most likely just cover A. I don't really care about the extra covers for this one. After that, we have Tales from the Dark Multiverse War of the Gods number one. I've read a few of these. I actually really enjoyed them, but I don't pick them all up because my knowledge on DC isn't all there. So I can't appreciate the stories as much as some other people. So for that reason, I usually don't pick them up. But then we have Batman The Adventures Continue number seven. This has a cover A and a cover B. I'm really looking forward to this. I'm not going to be picking this one up specifically, but I do have the first couple issues. I haven't read them yet. But I don't know what it is about this series that I just really want to read. I'm starting to get a little bit more into Batman, and I think this one sounds really cool, and I know a lot of people have been reading this and enjoying it. So at some point, I'm going to pick this one up. Let me know down low what you think about it. But then after that, we have another brand new series coming out called Justice League Endless Winter Number 1. I know some people have been pretty hyped for it, but I'm going to read a little bit about it for you. It says the crossover event of the season begins here. The Justice League encounters an extinction-level global storm brewing at the former site of the Fortress of Solitude. Enter the Frost King, a monster mad with power and with his army at his command. What devastating mystery lies in his past. 
And how does he tied with the Queen Hippolyta, I don't even know how you say that word, Swamp Thing, Viking Prince, and their reluctant ally, Black Adam. Two timelines will reveal further clues and secrets throughout each chapter of this blockbuster tale. It does sound very cool. I might end up picking that up. Depends on how the rest of my week looks. We'll see how that goes. But it does also have a cover B. I really like that cover B. Make sure you give it a shot if you're interested in Justice League. After that, though, we have The Dreaming Waking Hours number 5. It only has a cover A. I'm going to be skipping out on this one. And then we have Metal Men number 12. It has a cover A and a cover B. And this is the final issue in the series. So if you're reading Metal Men, make sure you pick it up. You want to see how this one ends. But those are the only issues coming out from DC this week. I'm definitely picking up Batman 104. Batman and Catwoman number one. Most likely cover A for both of those. And depending how the rest of my week looks, I might grab Justice League Endless Winter number one. Probably just go for cover A, but cover B is pretty cool too. But next up, let's talk about Marvel Comics. So Donny Cates is having a very nice week for himself, but let's see what the rest of Marvel's up to. First up, we've got Amazing Spider-Man number 53. This is the Last Remains tie-in. It only has a cover A. And despite me really hating this tie-in right now, I hate everything about it. I don't even enjoy reading it. I'm going to pick it up. I know that sounds so stupid, but I have all the issues and I really want to know what's going on with this series. I need to know what's going on between Spidey and Kindred, and maybe this one is going to tie it all in together. I know. But after that, we have Atlantis Attacks number 5 of 5. If you are reading this, the series is finally wrapping up. It has a cover A and a cover B. However, I don't know anybody that is reading this, so I'm just going to be skipping over it. But then we have Black Widow number 4. It has a cover A, B, and C. This is a surprisingly very good series right now. I'm really enjoying it. I look forward to reading every one of these issues when they release. I don't think enough people are reading this one. Give it a shot if you're light on a week. After that, we have Champions number 3. It only has a cover A, and this is another series that I talk very highly of. I really enjoy it. I think the artwork is incredible in it, and I don't think people are reading this because it has no spec value. The only thing going on in it really is Cradle, that anti-hero organization group against the teen heroes. Either way, I do think it's very good. Only three issues deep. You can get the back issues. I would check it out. From there, we have Civil War Marvel Snapshot number one. It has a cover A and a cover B. I'm going to be skipping out on this, just like I skipped out on every other Marvel Snapshots. Just not interested. But then we have Daredevil number 25. It has a cover A and a cover B. I have almost all the issues. I skipped out on the last one. I'm going to be skipping out on this one too. However, this is a brand new arc. If you are interested in reading this series, I don't think it's going to be a good jumping on point in my opinion. The verdict of his court case happened in the last issue, and now this is a brand new kind of Daredevil lifestyle. You definitely want to know what's going on prior to this, but it is a brand new arc, so they're probably going to explain it a little bit for you. I thought overall it was a pretty good run. It just, I don't know, I think it's better to read in a trade. After that, we have a brand new series, Fantastic Four Road Trip. Number one has a cover A, B, and C. I'm not even going to give a description of this. This is just a small little mini run. Personally, I'm not too interested in it, and I don't think a lot of people are going to be interested in this one. But then we have Helians, number seven, only has a cover A, so you X-Men fans, make sure you check that one out. I'm going to be skipping out on that. And then we have Donny Cates' brand new series that everyone has been waiting, what, two years almost, I feel like, for this one. King in Black, number one of five. That's the other thing. Everyone's been waiting for this, and it's only going to be five issues. It has a ton of different covers. It's got blank sketch variants, spoilers, a Peach Momoko for all you Momoko fans. I don't like it. I think it's ugly in my opinion. I'm just going to go for cover A. Some of them are pretty cool, though. This one, I am going to read a little bit about it, though, because people have been waiting a very long time for this. It says, Darkness reigns. After a campaign across the galaxy, Null's death, March arrives to the Earth, and worse yet, he hasn't come alone. With an army of hundreds of thousands of symbiote dragons at his command, the King in Black is a force unlike any Earth's heroes have ever faced. Eddie Brock, aka Venom, has seen firsthand the chaos that even one of Null's symbiotic monsters can wreak. Will he survive the encounter with the God of the Abyss himself? I am looking forward to it, it's just, I don't know, they've been playing Noel up for so long, this King in Black, so long, and Noel's been coming forever at this point. I'm kind of over it, I'm not going to get any of these tie-ins unless it ties into the main run of whatever ongoing I'm reading, but other than that, hopefully it's cool, I don't know, they've been talking it up forever. 
But then we do have one series I'm really looking forward to. Miles Morales Spider-Man number 21 has a cover A, B, and C. That cover C is incredible. I think that is absolutely gorgeous. I'm not really a fan of cover A. Cover B is kind of cool. But this is the end of the arc. I didn't really like this arc all too much. I thought it was very okay. So I'm looking forward to see how it ends. And the next issue is probably going to be very good after this. After that, we have another brand new series, Modoc Head Games, number one of four. It has a cover A, B, and C. Same thing, I'm probably not going to explain this one. I'm just not interested. I would like to read about Modoc, but not in a tiny little mini run. Just not for me. After that, we have Savage Avengers, number 15. It has a cover A and a cover B. I'm going to be skipping out on this one. I heard good things about that run, though. A lot of people are enjoying it. But then we have another brand new series coming out called The Union, number one of five. It has a cover A, B, and C. NC. I'm going to read a little bit about this one because I do think it's kind of a bigger issue because it's not exactly a first appearance, but it's a first team appearance. It says the grand unveiling of the Union, a team of superheroes gathered from all over the United Kingdom featuring Union Jack, Snakes, Kelpie, Choir, and their fearless leader, Britannia. But when disaster strikes on the first public debut in the form of the invasion of Empire, the fledgling team is immediately pushed to their limits. Don't miss out on this exciting new chapter from Marvel. You heard them, don't miss out. I might miss out though. I don't think I'm going to get it despite it being a first team appearance. Either way though, if you're interested in that, you're in the spec game, might be worth your while. From there though, we have Thor number 10. It has a cover A and a cover B, I've gotta say, the beginning of that new arc for Thor was incredible. I love that last issue so much. I, It was my favorite issue that I've read in a little while. I'm really looking forward to this issue, and I hope Donny Cates delivers with it. I'm actually looking more towards this Thor issue than King and Black. That's how much I really like this Thor right now. But then finishing up with Marvel, we have X-Factor, number five. It only has a cover A. I'm going to be skipping out on this one. But that is everything from Marvel this week. Pretty heavy week, kind of. There's a lot of big name titles coming out. I'm going to be getting Amazing Spider-Man number 53, The Last Remains tie-in. Black Widow number 4, most likely cover A. Champions number 3, only has cover A, so there's that. And then King and Black number 1, most likely just cover A, unless if they have a cool shot variant I might pick up. And then I'm grabbing Miles Morales, Spider-Man number 21, hopefully cover C. I think that is incredible, but if not, I'm just going to get what's there. But then we, I'm getting Thor number 10, cover A. I love that cover. I think it's so cool. But that's it from Marvel. So overall, I think we're going to have an incredible new comic book day this week. There's so many brand new series and big name titles releasing. The one I'm most looking forward to this week is not going to be King and Black, despite all the hype behind it. I'm really looking forward to reading Thor number 10. I'm going to get cover A, and I love this series right now. Some of the last few issues were a little bit of a letdown, but this new arc has just been top notch. Donnie Cates has absolutely delivered, and I can't wait to read it. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button down low and the little bell to get notified. Every time I drop new content, you won't regret it. And I've got two more videos sitting off to the side here with more of my comic book content. Click on one of those and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day.